Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blueprint video. My name is CJ and I'm one of the builders here at Blueprint. Today we're going to be sharing with you a legendary base that is perfect against those annoying spammy armies. Let's check out the base. First and foremost, I want to give a big shout out to Drake for winning the second $50 gift card of the month. Remember guys, we give away two $50 gift cards to customers that shared their review in our Discord server. We have a look at them. We see what fits a YouTube video. This is just to get you guys part of the content creation here at Blueprint. We're not asking anybody to fake reviews. Leave a review. You might get picked and you might get a chance at winning $50 gift card that you can use to purchase whatever you'd like from Blueprint that will be anything from our website or our Discord server. So let's jump into the base review. Let's have a look at this base. This base, I actually built it myself for the customer. Um, he usually gets it with a lot of spammy armies, a lot of super archers. So this base is more towards that kind of army, I would say. Um, so I would be careful running it higher in Legends. I, I, I do not recommend, but it is good at the mid range. Around five, 600, it's doing pretty good for him. Maybe even five, 700, it could do good. But I would be careful if you go high up because Queen Charges is a lot more popular there. And I'd, I'm not sure if this base is perfect against Queen Charges. Although it is very good against spammy armies. As we're going to see later in the video from the replays. Uh, one thing I wanted to note. Um, as you guys know, I love my Rage Towers. Rage Towers, I feel like one of the best towers in the game at the moment. Uh, I have my Rage Tower covering six important buildings I have. Two Infernals uh, covered, I have the Eagle covered, an Expo, Scattershot, and even the Grand Warden. And you don't, a Rage Grand Warden is absolutely broken. And I have that on both sides. Unfortunately, I couldn't clip the Warden on this side, but I could clip him on one side, which is enough to be honest. Um, but Rage Towers in this scenario, extremely annoying to deal with, uh, with different entries, honestly. Smash, Air Spam, anything. These Rage Towers covering all these defenses is very annoying for the attacker. And um, I also really like the air sweepers, uh, the way they are set up. I set them up so that people don't send, uh, as you guys know, super archer entries are very common from the eagle with the warden ability. But with the sweepers facing this entry right here, as you can see right here, it's quite annoying. If you see the coverage of the air sweepers, it's very annoying to send a blimp. It's extremely risky to send a blimp directly into two sweepers, first and foremost. Um, and yeah, we have uh, baited quite a few uh, Super Archer entries from the side as well. If they come in here, the Black Mice pop them, they clone over the wall and bye-bye Super Archers. And I have concentrated my traps at the 12 o'clock side. The Teslas, the Skelly traps, most of them are at the 12 o'clock side because reason being is this, uh, any entry, you don't want to end on two Rage Tower, right? So if any... If somebody was to attack this base, logically, they would go in from the Rage Tower and end up on the Town Hall, uh, one way or the other. So, um, you do not want to leave Rage Towers to deal with at the back end. So, obviously, they're going to be dealing with the Town Hall at the back end. So, I decided to reinforce my back end with Teslas, with traps, just to make it more annoying for attackers. And we're going to notice that, actually, in a few replays that we're going to watch. So... All in all, I really like this base in general against different spam armies. It's quite nice. And we're going to take a look at some replays to see whether or not it's been defending nice or not. See you in a moment. So the first replay I'm going to share with you guys is a Super Archer entry. There's going to be a couple of Super Archer entries on this base. As I said, it's a base that is perfect against those spammy armies. So the first one that I'm going to share with you is a Super Archer entry right into the Town Hall. This attacker decided to... Um, drop his blip in front of town to get the tunnel out of the way with the clones and um his super archers so let's take a look he drops his blimp in pops it and funny funnily enough he invis the coco balloon that was in front of his blimp and he actually ended up cloning it which is quite funny in my opinion i wanted to share this part um with you guys and he ended up cloning actually loons more than super archers um and his super archers ended up dying actually and yeah, that that's pretty much it. All he got was the Town Hall and the Expo. Uh, and yeah, and the Town Hall dropped. And now he is going to be using Hydra for the rest of the base. I'm going to speed it up a little bit because he does take quite a few seconds to think of what he's going to do. So he's dropping his heroes from the right side to go downwards toward the Eagle and spam his Hydra at 2 o'clock. So here we go. I'm going to be speeding it up just a tiny bit. 
And what I want to note is how the Rage Tower triggers and how much damage these Rage Towers are doing to these Dragons. Telling you guys, Raged Up defenses is absolutely no joke to deal with. Here we got the Inferno, and remember the Eagle is also in the Rage. So the Eagle is dealing double damage every single time it targets on something. So just note how quick these Dragons end up dying in the middle. I'm just going to leave it like this for a few seconds for you to watch. The Heroes are melting. The dragons barely make it out of the first compartment with the rage. That's all they got. The first town hall, uh, first scatter shot multi compartment. Sorry, not town hall. And here we have the poor queen that is about to go into a raged warden, guys. If you didn't believe me, that warden hits like a truck under the rage. Look at that. She was more than half HP, and now she's quarter of a health. And the second shot gets her to ability. He was a bit late on that invis, and bam, there you go. Ability forced. Dragon up top got picked off by the monolith a bit, but they did get the monolith out of the way. They won't do much afterwards. Yeah, guys. There you go. This is a beautiful defense. I think it was around 60... I think it was 61, yeah? 61%. There we go. That's the replay. The first one that we're going to be sharing a Super Archer entry into the tunnel. We're going to be sharing a few others as well in a moment. But yeah, per first defense, perfect. 19 trophies lost. That is the perfect amount to lose. Let's check out the next one. All right, guys, so the second replay that we're going to be sharing with you is yet another Super Archer, uh, Super Archer entry, but this time around from a different angle, not the same one. This attacker decided to come in with the Warden Blimp from the side, so he's coming from the side towards that Town Hall compartment, and I'm going to slow it down a bit so we can have a look what happens here. This guy has full Super Archer Blimps, so normally people take sneak, uh, some uh, Goblins with a couple of Wall Breakers and three Super Archers. But this attacker had a full-on Super Archer army, uh, I mean, in his CC. So that gi first Giant Bomb hits his Super Archers very hard. Um, and he landed it on the Bomb Tower, so you already know what's going to happen to them and when the Bomb Tower triggers, as it does after they hit other things. And if you notice, I do have a couple of storage storages near those Super Archer entries that might happen, and it's just annoying because... But the Super Archers get stuck on those storages and they're not able to uh, fully take advantage of, you know, dropping all those invises and getting all that value and they get stuck on storages and storages are a bit healthy. So as is, if you as a base builder want to do this yourself on your bases, make sure you don't have anything important behind the uh, storage from where the Super Archers are going to land, if that makes sense. So if they land on this position as he is right now, they are probably going to be shooting at it from this angle. And as you can see, that angle gets that Builder Hut. It does not hit the scatter shot. It does not hit the Multi-Infernal. So that is very important. If you, This is a little base building tip. It's annoying against these Super Archers because they have to invest more invises and they don't get that full value that they intended. And here we're going to see this attacker has one freeze with him, right? Uh, obviously to use against sweepers, but in this scenario, he can't freeze the sweepers both at the same time. So he decided to come from an angle and the super archers slowly are starting to town hall, uh, trigger town, uh, trigger to the town hall. But unfortunately, some of his super archers died to the bombs. So he wasn't sure whether or not he's going to get them. He decided to drop a freeze on the monolith. I was not sure if that was really needed because... I'm pretty sure they would have gotten anyways, but he invested that freeze anyway. And do you guys think that was enough value? He got CC pull, he got town hall, and one expo from using the warden and all his spells. I don't think that is enough value at all. All the key defenses are still up. The monolith is even still up. So this is going to be a huge, huge defense from this entry. And as you can see, he's now just full sending his army. Uh, and yeah, good luck getting through two Rage Towers. All these defenses raged up without a Warden ability. It is just too, too difficult to get through this without the Warden ability. Um, and yeah, the, his army slowly dies out. It's, it's not going to get it, guys. This is going to be a, a huge, another huge defense for Drake here. Uh, around 60%, guys. That's a huge defense. Let's check out another Super Archer entry or even... Uh, some of those spam yeti super archer entries as well all right guys so this is going to be uh, another super archer entry this is the final one i promise the next few replays i'm going to show you uh, 
a Zap Titan, and I'm going to show you a uh, a couple of those Yeti Super Archers or Titan Super Archer entries. As I said, heavily focused on spammy armies base. Um, this guy, this attacker, decided to do a, a different entry from the one that we saw before. It's quite similar, but from the other side. Um, and this time around, if you haven't noticed, a lot of uh, these players tend to drop their bones on top of the bomb tower because Super Archers have more health than uh, Blizzards, obviously, and they don't die to the bomb towers. So this attacker decided to take advantage of that and drop the blimp on top of uh, the bomb tower. Uh, and this one, this guy actually took, uh, like he like he should have, he took uh, goblins and sm uh, wall breakers in his blimp. So there was tanking in his blimp. Uh, although he did get quite lucky, if if there is one giant bomb between here uh, and and the wall right there, I'm pretty sure his cloned up uh, Super Archer would have died. Nevertheless, that storage took some time to get through, and obviously there's an ice column in the CC. I'm going to be sharing that uh, CC as well with you guys in the description. Um, but he's trying to clone the, the ice cone so the super archers don't get triggered on that. But when he's doing that, he's also cloning the monolith. And that is quite important because now he's not going to get the monolith because of that. There's nothing to target towards the monolith. So the monolith is going to stay standing. Town Hall didn't even go down. So instantly we know this is going to be a huge fail for us and a fantastic defense. So now it's all about, all right, let me get that down. Oh, he's spamming his uh, E-Titans, he's sending his healers. Uh, the wall breaker, he thought it would target this wall segment, but this part is open, so it targeted this closed one right here. And he sent his RC into this compartment. She will not make it far out of that compartment. And if we notice here, everything is going to be right in front of Tano. They're going to go into the Tano poison in a moment. And yeah, this is a, a huge defense. Um, very, very nice base against these armies, if I'm being quite honest. And there we go. This is going to end around 71%. Yet again, very good percentage. Very, very good percentage. All right. We're done with the Super Archer entries. Let's check out a few Zap Titans, a few of those Yeti Spam Super Archer entries as well. See you in a moment. All right, guys. So for this next one, we have a Zap E-Titan attack. Zap E-Titan is quite popular but this guy has a couple of super archers in his uh, composition uh, he decides to zap the expo and the scattershot um, which is quite nice value fair play to him and he ends up dropping his flame flinger right into the cannon's range obviously did not count the tiles correctly here i'm pretty sure he could not have dropped it correct he could have maybe if it was one tile more backwards but nevertheless he had to invest a freeze you had to invest two looms, a couple of barbs right away. So the flinger is supposed to go all the way to the eagle, and he decides to... I don't know why he waited so long with uh, his warden. Kingsman did recently do a, a masterclass, so if this, I'm pretty sure this guy does need to watch that masterclass. He could have saved a bit of time there if he started his warden walk earlier. Um, and there we go, guys. He decides from his smash, and he jumps right on t onto that compartment right there. Pops his warden ability, um, and yeah, let's take a just look at what happens to the smash. How is the base effective against this? Um, and there we go, the king dies, E Titans pretty much dead as well, Super Archers gone, Warden pretty much dead, and yeah guys, the Rage Tower goes off on the final compartment. Um, there we go, the RC will not survive that. Even if the healers were on her, the Raged Up Scatter, Raged Up Expo is way too much. Even Raged Up Eagle. So it did get quite a bit close, but remember, he spent a really long time in that entry, and this really, he did not quit the attack. If you notice that the timestamp uh, when we started, he did not quit this. So it ended at a 77%. Once again, pretty good defense, and it was against a Zap Titan entry. Next up, we're going to see those Yeti Super Archers. All right, so here we now have for you a, a very common, actually, uh, spam army that is a bunch of Yetis, a bunch of Super Archers, and four Quakes. Now, remember what I said earlier in the base review. I said that most likely, if people were to spam this base, they would enter through the Rage Tower side because they want to use that early tome to cover the damage that the Rage Tower does. So it's important for the back end to be extremely trapped. So here we have 
this guy, for example, he's coming in with a couple of Yetis and Archers on each side for funnel. And then he's full sending his spam straight down the middle of the base. Um, and he sends his RC quite early. I'm not sure if that was even correct. Because look at this. The raged up RC gets a, uh, gets a hold of her. And yeah, raged RC against a normal RC. That ain't, going, that ain't gonna end well for your normal RC. But here... He decides to use the fourth quake pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. He opens the middle of the base. So the pathing is quite nice towards the end, but this Kettershot does stay up. Um, and yeah, everything now goes into the Town Hall Poison. They, they, yep, everything now just dies to the Town Hall Poison. All the Super Archers are dead except for these ones on the outskirt. But besides that, that's it, guys. The base still holds that even though they went through the middle because look at guys the amount of tiles from this scattershot to here it's not enough for the super archers to reach it so they're not able to reach that scattershot and the same story on the right side if he did not send his rc from the right side both scattershots would be picking off his super archers and his troops that end up going in the middle here so maybe he was correct by sending his rc but that raged up rc did not uh did not let him get it so easy. And here his queen dies pretty quickly. And that's all she wrote around 76%. Once again, in the 70 range, that's what you should be aiming for on defense. 70 range, 60 range, perfect defenses. Let's check out another spam army. So another army that we see quite often is also this one, a bunch of E-Titans and Super Archers. Um, and the same story, as I said before, if people were to spam this, they are going to directly go into the Rage Towers because no chance in hell they're going to leave two Rage Towers on the back end to deal with, with all the key defenses. So classic, dropping all the skellies, spamming right down the middle with the Log Launcher. Once again, he's going for it. He sends his RC from the bottom and he sent a bunch of Super Archers on the outskirts to get this scatter shot. So far, his plan is planning... Um, and yeah, he's going straight for the town hall. It got opened right there. I'm not sure what opened it exactly, but he did manage to get there. And yeah, he went through everything, but look at this, guys. There's not enough steam left. And the back end is extremely trapped, as we saw in the base review. There's a bunch of skellies. There's a bunch of Teslas. The Barbarian King. And the town hall did not even go down in this scenario. And the town hall stays up here. And this is going to be a huge defense for Drake, actually going to end up with a one star i think he ends with 72 oh no 71 percent one star this is a perfect defense to get but as i said um, the race towers are at the back end so people most likely to enter from there so it's all about trapping the front side of the tunnel making it extremely toxic and yeah this base has been doing fantastic for drake and i hope it does for you as well so guys, the base link is going to be down below in the description. Make sure you read the description properly. It's going to be right there along the CC that we recommend when running this base. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like button down below. Let's try to aim for 500 likes. I know we can do it. That just shows that you guys enjoyed the videos that we're making. And it gives a little motivation to do some more. And make sure you guys subscribe and turn the notifications on to get notified whenever we upload a video. But I hope you guys have a lovely day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.